Alright guys, today we've got a smart remote, air remote mouse, and keyboard and touchpad. So I picked this up because I'm going to be replacing Plex uh, pretty soon here. And uh, so I picked up this, it's a little keyboard used to control the TV, well, to control your computer. And in our bedroom, we're going to have a little TV in there. Well, we got the TV. It's not little. It's uh, like a 60 inch or something. 55. <clears throat> but basically, we've got TiVo right now. And, uh, well, TiVo's on its way out. Is there instructions? Ah, look. Even comes with a USB charging cord. <clears throat> I apologize, my uh, allergies are kind of driving me nuts today. Much. Oh, I guess you don't actually open it. How do you turn it on? Uh, let me go plug this in real quick and see if it needs to be charged. Alright guys, when you're uh, reviewing an item, it, it definitely pays to uh, check everywhere. I couldn't figure out how to turn it on. And, uh, well, to pair it, you're supposed to press TV and OK, and the manual says that the, the status light, where is it at? That little guy right there will blink. Well, it does blink. Oops. Um, you just have to turn the switch on first, which is right here on the side. Isn't that handy information? Sheesh. Anyways, so you have the air mouse, which means you can just kind of point the thing wherever, like this, and then, you know, come up and... open something. Yeah, this was a video I was looking up because my uh, Pi 4, I was mounting it and I broke off this resistor right here and that one right there. This is somebody else's. He apparently did the same thing when he was soldering and then scraped his soldering iron right across through that area. <coughs> so, and then you have a full, I believe they call it a QWERTY keyboard and a touchpad so you can do that to move around, which is a lot more precise when you're trying to uh, operate something. But I figured this will work great. We have a uh, small computer that I found at a second hand store, and we're going to be using that to replace TiVo. Just a second, I'll go grab that. So I found this guy at a second hand store uh, for 40 bucks. It's an Optiplex 7080 Micro. Uh, the only thing I could find wrong with it, somebody of course pulled the hard drive out and it had one stick of RAM, it was 16 gigabytes, and it was not installed properly so it wouldn't boot. The light just blinked on the front. Um, so I mounted that in there right and everything seems to work. I'm going to be adding wireless to it. It's got the spots for it. I already got the card installed, I just got to find the correct um, connectors to go in there and then I had to buy an adapter because uh, it's going to be hooked to a TV and that's got HDMI and not display for it. I haven't read through the instructions yet. It has a TV button. I'm kind of hoping that means I can uh, control the TV with it. However, oh it does have an IR blaster right there. So maybe you can actually control the TV with it. That'd be great. Be able to turn it on and off. Um, it is backlit, so you have, you know, different colors. You're supposed to be able to, yeah, like that. There you go. That'd be much better at night. And then backlit for that part too. Of course, blue is a color that doesn't really work well for me. At night, I can't read these numbers or letters or nothing. But it's got a whole slew of different colors. is kind of cool. 
that one there is one of those colors that messes with me too <clears throat> but anyways uh, it seems to work no complaint there so you can turn off the mouse moving around by hitting this button and I'm assuming which is yep. what I want to know look at that you can pause and unpause your YouTube right from here let's see how it does with Plex alright so if we click this we can pause it. Look at that. Can we skip? We can skip. Alright. And of course we have a TV tuner, which is the whole thing with replacing the TiVo service. Um, when it's in here, it automatically commercials um, as it's recording it. So. You know, you can watch live TV. This hits close to home. At home. It always pauses when you first start watching. And then uh, about 15 seconds or so, it'll start playing. <clears throat> and then, of course, you can pause, hopefully. Well, that doesn't work. The volume does. So yeah, that ought to work out rather nicely. After, of course, okay, shut up already. Never to get used to it, but you know, we're getting rid of it. Uh, the other unit we have is a home run silicone dust. That's who makes it. And I believe it's this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so it can record four shows, HD. Um, the only thing that it doesn't do that uh, we really like about TiVo is you can switch through the tuners. That way you can pause one show, come back and watch another show if you're watching them live, hit pause when you hit commercials, go back, watch the other one, unpause it, and you can kind of play around with the channels that way and not have to watch commercials, so long as there's two shows you want to watch. Um, the reason why we're getting rid of TiVo is, you know, we're on an older plan, so I think it's like $15 a month. Um, they offer this new program where you can, well, not new, it's been out for a while now, but it skips commercials, it auto skips once the show's been recorded and I think it's about an hour, sometimes two hours after the show's been recorded then you can skip commercials automatically. The problem is now all of a sudden within the last year they started making it so when you start a show, no matter if it has skips or not, it plays a commercial that they're getting paid for that it downloads on your internet which uh, last year when everybody was in lockdown the uh, our internet was getting used like crazy and those commercials add up they're downloading in HD um, you're paying for a service so why I have to watch an ad to watch my show that I recorded off of antenna which is free drives me insane um, I think they're just kind of abusing them, their uh, their power and position and, and their service there by doing that. The only problem I've had with it so far, we are currently uh, replacing our floor and we had to, you know, move all the TV equipment away from the wall and unplug it and doing that, it disconnected from our network and somehow Plex couldn't reconnect to it, so I had to delete the DVR, or not the DVR, but the tuner, and then add it back in, and the, uh, it just automatically found it again. I don't know why it couldn't reconnect to it, but I didn't have to set up any of my shows. It, it just automatically went, okay, these shows are back on that channel again, and started recording them. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I'll probably most likely end up moving that into the closet where we have the rest of our networking gear 
and have a backup battery on it so that doesn't happen again or at least it'll happen a whole lot less <clears throat> so yeah I mean that's that's where we're at so far it works pretty good you can you know anyways the remote this is a review on the remote this is kind of cool these uh it's got a rechargeable battery so you don't have to put double or triple a batteries in it this battery has been used in Nokia phones since like what 98 the thing's still running jeez I mean that that battery you can find just about everywhere which is kind of cool um, and, and that's just right up underneath that cover there like that underneath the touchpad so it charges over a USB micro um, which it came with the charging cord for it which I didn't undo because we have you know two of them plugged in all over there so we'll just be charging it off of that and uh, yeah I mean I had one of these before I gave it to my father-in-law um, <laughs> it has the old uh, Internet Explorer symbol in there I don't know if you can see that or not that's kind of funny so anyways, yeah, this should be a great device for in the bedroom there to run Plex with this. So there's the plan. All right, guys, thanks for watching.